Hello. A little while ago, I watched Joe Pai, or Joe Pizinski, I believe is how you pronounce his name. If not, I apologize, Joe. I, uh, I saw him do an excellent uh, construct on how to measure the mouth of a taper by using a gauge ball. And he did it for 30 degrees and showed the construct for that. And I was just thinking, that would be something you could easily put into, into an equation and solve for any size ball, any taper. Um, uh, so I just thought I would uh, try to come up with that equation. So let me get set up here. I don't draw as well as him, so I just literally have some paper on a piece of plywood on uh, two saw horses with uh, a really old T-square. This is my father's. I can't find mine. I have a drafting arm, but I'm not going to set it up on a piece of plywood. So let me isn't straight at the bottom, so let me get it so it goes straight here. Okay, so let me just draw what he had, but I won't put the angles in. I'll just make it theta and things like that. So this will be the vertical line that the ball's on. Let me put a ball in. I'll just make the ball right here, this size. Let me do it this way. I'm right of course, the camera is right in the way. I'm trying to do this uh, so you could see it. I'm pressing extra hard. I wouldn't normally do it that hard. Okay, so hopefully you could see that ball. I'm just going to use similar angles. Pressing extra hard on this too, so you could see it. So there's the angles. We'll make this. Let me stand up. We'll make this the top of the hole. So that and that doesn't exist. I have a mask, but I'm not drafting. I'm just rolling here. Okay, so you know the included angle here. I'm just going to do this. This is theta. Okay, these balls touch on a tangent, as he pointed out. So let me just go like that and draw that in. And draw it in from here as well. I haven't drafted in a long time. And this isn't drafting, it's just drawing. This distance here is R. This is R. This is R. Let me draw this in. And again, this, this isn't a drafting table, it's not angled. I can't see. <laughs> okay. This is 90, and this is 90. So this is equal to theta. Actually, let me just worry about the one side. We're just going to do this side. This is theta. Okay, you have an angle and a radius here. So this side is equal to r cosine theta. And this side is equal to r sine theta. So we already have this distance here. And now what we're interested in is from this point up, we're interested in this distance. Because we just got this. It's r cosine theta. We're interested in this. OK. Now we'll call this distance y. So we're interested in this. This is a vertical line in the same angle as that, so this angle is theta. Uh, we'll call this height x. And we know from basic trigonometry that tangent theta is equal to y over x. So if you want to solve for y, y is equal to x times tangent theta. So there, we know that y is equal to x times th tangent theta, so now all we have to do is solve for x. So we know that this height here, 
which I'll call L. Can you see up here? Yep. L is equal to R plus R sine theta. I'm trying to write big so you could see it. And then what we do is we measure H here. And then we have X. This X distance here would be equal to L minus H. You're taking this and subtracting that and gives you this X, which is equal to, since we know L, R plus R sine theta minus H. So that is this distance X. So now we know this distance, we can figure out Y. Y is equal to X tangent theta. And that's the same as that, so we'll put that in. So that is equal to R plus R sine theta minus H times tangent theta. So now we have that. We have this distance and we have this distance. So I'll just do it from here to here. I'll call this V, which is just this half distance. You don't have to do all this. I'm just putting it together. V is equal to this part here, R cosine theta plus Y, which is equal to R plus R sine theta minus H times tangent. And the width is equal to 2V. It's two times this. Usually something like this you'd solve for one side. It makes it easier. And then just multiply it by 2, which is equal to 2 times R cosine theta plus R plus R sine theta minus H times tangent theta. Close the brackets. That's an awful H. I get into scribble mode. Uh, okay, so that's a function of W, or that's, that's, that's how to find W, the width, is a function of H, the height of the ball. We're interested in the other way around, so let's just solve this for uh, H. But anyway, that is the one final equation. Say if you put a ball down there and measured the height, and you wanted to know the width, and you knew the angle and the radius of the ball, that would give you the width. Let's solve this for the height. I can go through step by step, but let me just do this real quick. Um, okay, we want to solve for this. We have H is equal. We started out with a W on this side, so I'm going to put a W. This whole shebang is multiplied by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 to take it over to the other side. Uh, this is multiplied together and it has R cosine theta added to this side, so I'm going to subtract it from both sides. Um, and then that leaves this, which is multiplied by tangent, so we'll divide both sides by tangent. And uh, theta. And then it leaves the h minus h plus r plus r sine theta. So I'm going to subtract r minus r sine theta from both sides. That leaves you minus h. In order to make it a positive h, you just change all the signs. So that means that h is equal, with a little rearranging because of the signs, r cosine theta minus W over 2 times 1 over tangent theta plus R plus R sine theta. This equation will give you H for any size R, any size W, assuming that the, uh, the rate, the diameter of the ball is less than the W, and any angle, you know, angle where a taper would be. It's not going to be 180 degrees or down this way. Um, so, you know, a standard taper with a ball in there that would sit in there. So, let's give it a try for the example. 
the example that was given, uh, oh heck, I'll write it up here. The width was equal to 1.5 inches. Theta was equal to 30 degrees. Uh, the radius was equal to 0 0.5 inches. And the height, I believe, was equal to 0 0.201. That's the result we're trying to get when we plug the rest of this in. So uh, let's plug that in. H is equal to, oh, let me give you another thing. Uh, if you work with textbook stuff a lot, you see 30, 60, 90, or excuse me, you see angles of 30 degrees, triangles with angles with 60 degrees, so you got your 30, 60, 90, and you have your 45, 45, 90. And that's good numbers to memorize, so you could just do quickly. So sine of 30 degrees is equal to 0.5. Cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 0 0.866, and I remember that from the historical date. And the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 0 0.577. So, and these are easy to remember because once you do them a lot, you remember them. And then the other thing is, is you only, for sine and cosine, all you have to remember is this angle and this angle because for 30, the 0.5 is the sine. For 60, the 0.5 is the cosine. The only thing that would happen, so this would be equal to cosine of 60 and this is equal to sine of 60. So, uh, so you only really have to remember these numbers, and the tangent of this would be 1 over, which I believe is uh, 1.733 or somewhere around there. Uh, the other thing is, is I only work in sine, cosines, and tangents. I never work in secants or cosecants. One, there's less rules to remember, and two, those buttons are never on the calculator, so why would I even remember them? So, okay, so let's plug it in with these numbers. So, and this is with the example with these numbers. Okay, so we have R is 0 0.5, and I always put the units in to make sure the units work, times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0 0.866, minus the width, 1.5 inches over 2, times 1 over the tangent, which is 0 0.577, plus the radius, which is 0 0.5 inches, plus R sine theta, which is 0 0.5 inches, times the sine of theta is 0 0.5, or theta is 30 degrees. So let's see, let's start to take this. 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25 inches, plus 0.5 inches is equal to 0 0.75 inches. Seen that number before. Um, 866 times 0.5 is 0 0.433 inches, seen that before, minus 1.5 over 2, which is equal to 0 0.75 inches. Uh, multiply that by 1 over 0 0.577. Let's get out the calculator. Arithmetic's one of them things you have to do a whole lot, and uh, I do some, but not enough, and I've actually when I was doing some teaching, stuck at the blackboard with an arithmetic problem. <laughs> That's real simple, and you're used to doing it with a calculator. It's also damned embarrassing. 0.433 minus 0.75 is equal to the minus 0.317 divided by 0.577 is equal to minus 0.54939, and then add 0.75 and that is equal to 0 0.2006, but he was working in three decimal places, so it is 0 0.201 inches. He's working in three decimal places. So that does check, and we can try it for some different angles as well, or different size balls and things. Uh, but anyway, for what the construct he did, this is an equation that you can use so you don't have to set it up every time. You can just uh, set it up like this. You could almost do a drawing with R, angle, and the height. Because that's the really things you need. You need the radius, you need the angle, and the desired width to solve for the height. So, 
I hope this helps. I thought it was kind of neat. It was just something I enjoy playing with, so I thought I'd come out here and play with it. But anyway, this is the equation for figuring out height as a function of everything, and this is the equation for figuring out the width as a function of everything else. Thank you. I'll see you. Bye.